My biggest frustration right now with Mid Journey is faces. I've been working on some portrait ideas, and it's fun pursuing those, but the more the more I get to them, the more the eyes just end up looking horrible. And the nose is slightly off, crooked, it's all messed up. And if you do any additional iterating on these, the face continues to fall apart. In this episode, probably the final episode of the formal Mid Journey Masterclass here, we're covering how to fix your faces. Let's fix your face. I'm Addy. Welcome back to Analog Dreams. I hope you've been enjoying this course. And obviously, this is just a light upscale. We've got some additional upscaling to do, some sharpening up, whatever. But we got to fix those eyes, man. We got to fix them. So in this video, we're covering a couple different ways that you can manipulate a face. Now, first and foremost, one of the biggest problems you run into that isn't necessarily on this image, but is on a lot of them, is that the eyes are crooked or they're not completely symmetrical. I like the little raised eyebrow thing going on here. Like, that's kind of an appealing look. But we have two completely different eyes, which means we need to, to, to get those symmetrical. Obviously, a real person doesn't have the exact same eyes on both sides of their face. But if we're going to try to recreate something reasonable here, the first step that you might want to try is to just move one of the eyes over. Determine which one of these eyes you want to keep as the most realistic and just give it a little select here. That should be fine. Control J, Control T. We're going to horizontal flip it. We're going to move it over. Try to get it lined up with where the other one was. And then we got to blend it because right now it looked like she just got punched in the eye. <laughs> and so that's where we come in with some adjustments. For example, we'll do a levels adjustment and we'll do a clipping mask for this. And try to get some of that brightness back. Try to match the skin tone a little bit there. That's looking pretty good. It's looking about right to the surrounding areas. So then we can come in here and mask it out. So we can hit a mask and then we'll just use the black brush and use a really soft brush to just blend it together. Kind of like doing makeup. You just want to lightly blend. You don't want it to be dramatic and obvious. You just want, just want a little bit of blending. So it looks a little bit more natural. Hide the seam, hide the transition make it looks like look like it belongs there we're getting there we're not totally there yet something like that she does have some very dark eye bag action going on here but that's mostly I mean eye for eye it's mostly kind of blended there we can still tweak our levels a little bit if desired bring some of that back try to Color match a tiny bit more. I think we were more spot on the first time. And you can obviously color shift, hue match, and whatever. Again. Nope, nope. Further, just feather and blend that in. Just, again, like you would with makeup. Just lightly kind of coax it in there. And then we at least have matching eyes. They still don't look great, but they're matching. And then from there, we can use all sorts of things. So let's group these up. Turn them into a smart object. Then we want to make them look like real eyes. So for that, I have another open source tool I want to recommend called GFP GAN. Um, it's a demo that runs on Google Collaboration. And so when you open it up, I'll have a link in the description below. There's a connect button right here. You click that and then we can start bringing in our images. So I come down here. We run this. Run anyway. So if you've never used Google Collaborate, it's basically a live coding environment. It's kind of designed to teach you things, but a lot of people use it as like a live, uh, <laughs> a live demo to run things, which is weird to me, but it works. So you come down to all the play buttons left to the code. You don't need to know what the code does. It's not why we're here. You tell it to run. It's going to run and load everything that it needs to and update the software. You can run this locally. When I get that going, I will have a separate tutorial for those who want to be hardcore about it. That'll be me. There we go. We ran that step. So we continue scrolling and now we can upload our images. So we press play on this code block Then we can choose choose file. And now we need to have saved out this image. So I'm going to save this real quick. I'm going to quick export as PNG just to give it the best quality without any extra compression. There's our image. There we go. It's uploading our file. 
Whenever it's done, it has uploaded the image. Now we go to step three, click play. Again, let it run its code. I know this is kind of tedious to go through each of the steps. But it's going to go through and analyze the image of the face, figure out where the elements are, how the face looks, reference, you know, other faces to figure out what it's looking at. And then we'll come down here to the next step. You don't really have to do anything for this. All right, now we click visualize and it's going to crop the faces and show us the faces side by side. And there you can see it's replacing the eyes with a real human being's eyes. I mean, not literally a real one, but it has cleaned up the eyes, made them look more real. It even has some variance between the two eyes, which is incredible. It has made the lips look more photorealistic. You even have some teeth popping out below them. And the nose, the nose is completely recovered. This is incredible. It has messed up the hair a little bit. It's made it a little bit aliasy, but that is okay. Now we can visualize the whole image. Click play there. There it has cleaned up the entire image. That is incredible. So now you can just download the results. Whee! It's going to give you a zip file with all the different files it has generated through this process. We can have a whole dedicated video on how this works later, but I only have so much record time today, so I just want to show you it in action. And this is incredible. I'm going to go ahead and save the zip file. It'll give you the cropped faces, the restored faces. Actually, we'll just we'll, we'll export all this. Let's take an exploration of what all it gives you because it gives you a lot of information here. You've got the cropped face. So if you upload multiple images or an image with multiple faces, it'll go through it. It's got the comparison image that it showed us. So you like have everything to work with. And then the full restored image that you can import back. And it looks like it's actually a little bit higher resolution. Maybe I'm crazy. But then we can drag it back into our Photoshop comp. And look at that. We have a human face. It doesn't look like an alien. My mind is blown, but you can see here the hair is very much degraded. Like it made it look a little bit more realistic and less painterly, but it's got some aliasing going on. And so that I would want to start blending back like we had talked about before. So I would honestly personally prefer to just use it for the face. So then we can use our masking and start reclaiming some of the hair. I appreciate what it was trying to do, but it's not necessarily what I want to do. So I can recover some of that, get some of those jaggies out there, maybe even recover a couple hair strands apparently, which is pretty cool. Just kind of blend it together. And you get the general idea and we have been given a face, which is just wild and mind blowing to me as it is. Then you can take it a step further. You could also use Photoshop's neural filters here. Neural filters, it's not going to do that because we have a mask. We're going to rasterize layer. Filter. Neural filters and they have some smart portrait features as well in here that can help modify the face even further. I know FaceApp and Facetune give you actual like real makeup control. This one has makeup transfer. We don't have a reference image for that right now, but you can try that. We've got smart portraits so we can make her smiling more. This one, instead of running locally, processes in the cloud, so it runs a little slow as it has to upload your face and then download it back. It's not a pretty smile, but you can do it. You can also age it up. Don't know what it really tried to do there, but you get the idea. You can play with some of that. We're going to turn that off. Um, those are really useful in moderation and when blending, less useful when you're just cranking them to the max. But then you have makeup transfer. You need an image to transfer makeup from. So we're going to look up just like heavy makeup woman portrait. I don't know what I'm looking up here. We can get something with like caked on makeup. Yeah, that right there. Copy image address. Select an image. Browse. Paste image address. Use this image. Give it a sec. Yep. Boom! Hold oh, that's so much better than I expected. Off. On. That is smooth. We've got the eyeliner, eyeshadow, and the lipstick. That works really well. That is damn impressive. You might want to mask out some of that extra that bled on there, kind of like they smudged it. But like... Turned out pretty nice. And from there, you can also sync the file up to Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever you use iCloud to transfer it to your mobile device, which would work a lot easier uh, on iPhone if you're using a Mac uh, to go between Mac and iPad. But on PC and iPhone, it's a little weird. But, you know, you cloud transfer it to your phone, drop it in an app like FaceApp, Facetune, uh, Visco, all the ones that people use these days to apply makeup, portraiture, things like that. 
sync it back up, bring it back. And even if they produce it at a lower resolution, you can still blend in some of those details to get the result that you want. And I mean, let, let, let's actually apply that makeup. I don't know why it didn't apply. And the thing to note with these neural filters is they apply them to a new language or language layer. So if it messes up some of the aspects, you can easily blend them back. So for example, I don't like this little shadow up here. We can apply a mask and then we can shrink this down and just like mask that part off. Bam. Look at that. All right. Now. Our before and after. Using mostly completely free tools. I mean, Photoshop isn't free, but like that is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I hope it has been incredible for you to learn how to do this to improve your faces on Midjourney and other AI generated apps to take your art to the absolute next level. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Join us on Discord to play with it and ask more questions. Discord.gg slash Ablesvox. Subscribe to the Analog Dreams YouTube channel for more guides on this kind of stuff. And remember to be kind. Rewind.